Oh yeah, ain't she pretty? 1,000 amp hours of awesome. Ha <laughs> ha. Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Way Off Grid. This is my 1000 amp hour solar power room. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's head inside and check this thing out. All right, here we are inside. 55,000 watt hour, 1000 amp hour of lithium storage room. We're gonna get down to all the details and we're gonna give you a little bit of information about each and every one of the systems that makes this room operate. Let's get to it. Alright, so just a quick general overview of the inside of the system. We have two 500 amp hour battery banks, number one and number two. We have two 100 amp Ames 48 volt charge controllers, MPPT, one on this side and one on the other side behind the monitor. We have two sets of 180 amps and 180 amps worth of solar breakers and our midnight solar combiner box is bringing all the solar down from the roof and then we have all of our interconnects and main bus back here in the back all of our uh, on off main on offs and our main breakers for all of our charge controllers and then here we have our cells themselves with all of our leafmon uh, battery management system modules on the front of each cell. We have our Watchmon 4 controller here from Batrium managing the cell and balancing each pack. And then we also have our Batrium up in the top right hand corner there kind of watching us and, and bleeding off some energy there as you can see from that one pack that has reached its full charge. And uh, now we're going to move on to some of the other systems here in the pack. Alright, what we have here is our Ames 10,000 watt inverter with a 30,000 watt burst for 60 seconds. Uh, it is also our uh, shore power charger. It has a 100 amp, I believe, 50, 60 or 100 amp charger inside of it. Uh, when you plug into a shore power switch, the entire room will basically start charging the batteries in the other direction without the solar. So you could be running that from a generator, you could be running that from uh, AC power and you can basically use the system like a giant UPS battery uh, Same thing is like is under your computer running the show there when the lights go out and kind of keeps everything on So you can shut down. This is just a longer more powerful version of that uh, It can operate completely off-grid and again, we can do some really really heavy loads with this thing uh, 10,000 watts. I've, I've got to say I've never actually reached even close to three quarters of the capacity that this thing can do. Um, you've got your little display here that shows you what your battery state is currently. Uh, output voltage 229 volts. Output frequency is a nice stable 60 hertz. 56.8 volts currently on our battery. And uh, as far as our output load, we're, we're pretty much at zero. And it's running all the lights in this room. It's running a computer right behind me. Uh, it's also running the lights in the front room, the front office room. Uh, on the other side of the door on the other side of the wall here uh, and pretty much everything else that is on this wall is all running on the system right now but our load is zero percent and that gives you kind of an idea of, of what this thing can do and how much load it is truly capable of and this is basically the brains of the outfit the same power 10,000 uh, does our 110 and our 220 I believe it's 120 240 um, split phase and we can run pretty much any load we want we've actually got a 50 amp RV plug on the outside of this unit so you could plug in a welder to this thing you could plug in a full RV uh, and it would it would easily power every system inside of such a thing if you had multiple air conditioners in an RV this will run it uh, and under full Sun it's still going to be able to achieve some charge while it's running it um, you're not going to be able to run a load like that all the time on this little solar, but that is why the system is expandable. So you just add until you get up to whatever your offset is, and voila, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so here we have our individual cell packs for this system. You'll notice that we have our Batrium Leafmon here. We have our 
positive bus bar running down this side, we have our negative bus bar running down this side, and we have our common bar running down the middle. We have our interconnecting bars that are running here. These are one watt bars, pure copper, and it's basically just made with wire that has a crimped connector at each end, and these each can carry 150 amps of current. So the capacity between each cell with two bus bars running in between them interconnect bars, excuse me, running in between them is going to be 300 amps, much more than the inverter or the rest of the system will ever be able to pull from this cell. As with most things electrical, to build it properly you need to overbuild it. You want to make sure that there's no heat or temperature. These are ice cold even when there is a significant load on the system and it's all about safety. Everything is about making sure you're overbuilt, that it's extra safe, You'll notice that our positive lead for our battery up here has a fuse in, in line on the positive. That should go for pretty much everything you've got in a system like this. You always want to make sure and have all your fuses, all your disconnects, all your safety switches out where they can be gotten to easily to where you can immediately shut off the power, make this thing as l less dangerous as you possibly can at a moment's notice. When you're working with large format lithium batteries, and anything electrical for that matter, safety is number one. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. These cell plates, uh, top and bottom, are our wood. Uh, obviously this system has a, a fire control system built into the room, uh, and we don't intend for them to ever you know, get hot enough to where they're going to catch fire or anything like that. Again, we're way overbuilt here, so we figured that wood was pretty appropriate, considering all we're really using it to do is create pressure top and bottom. Uh, threaded, I believe it is a uh, half inch ready rod, not, not half inch, uh, three eighths ready rod running down through the middle uh, of the, all of the holes on the cells. And uh, those are being used for what's called fixture or compression. And you have to be, I believe it's 1.33 inches center hole to center hole here uh, in order for this to achieve the right amount of fixture or compression. So what we did was we just made ourselves a top and bottom plate. We stained the top plate uh, on a recent refit of this system, uh, but it just wasn't uh, safe to go ahead and do that while the, the bottom plate was still attached to the cell. And we didn't want to fully break them down. It's kind of difficult to get them completely broken down. I'm sorry about that on the camera. Uh, kind of difficult to get them completely broken down. So we just took off the top plate and did some general maintenance, switched out a few packs, things like that. Uh, these are about probably six months in use at this point, so we just want to go through, check them, make sure everybody's staying nice and in balance, even when the bars are off, so to speak. Um, you know, just making sure, again, that you're doing it safely and that you're making sure that all of these packs are operating like they're supposed to. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about main switch disconnects and uh, primary bus bars for large-scale batteries like this one in, say, a power room or an off-grid setup. We have our main DC positive bar here and our main DC negative bar there combining our two cells worth of, of energy together and then feeding those at 300 amp to our inverter. We have our primary disconnect for bank one on top for bank battery bank two on the bottom and then we have individual charge control breakers as well as we have individual breakers for every bank of solar panels that we have outside and these allow us to do a full disconnect on any part of the system in a very isolated way so that we can take down half of the system if we want to for maintenance while leaving the other half of the system up and running uh, obviously for maximum safety whenever we're doing anything full disassembly we're taking down the entire system we're shutting off all the disconnects we're throwing all the breakers and we're just making sure we're doing this in as safe a way as possible we have our two Batrium shunts down there. We have our Batrium for Bank 1 up here. We have our Batrium for Bank 2 down below. And then these are all of our main bank interconnects here, going to our Bank 1 disconnect and our Bank 2 disconnect. And the smaller wire that you see there is all going to charge controllers from solar panel to charge controller and then from charge controller out to the front of the cell itself right here and then you have another set on the other side 
of those same wires going to the cell on the bottom. Each one of these is a 500 amp hour pack, cell, cell pack, and combined they make a 1000 amp hour system. All computer controlled by Batrium, doing all the cell management and leveling and balancing of the system itself. You have 100 amps per side of solar capacity. We are nowhere near that right now. We only have about 45 to 55 amps on a really sunny day up on the roof at the moment, which can keep the system charged with even a pretty moderate load on it. You could be running a 10,000 or 12,000 BTU air conditioner on this system pretty much 24 seven. And there's enough solar on the roof to offset it entirely. Uh, plus the lights, plus a few other small loads. Uh, we had 10,000 BTUs of air conditioner, uh, refrigerator, chest freezer, two computers, um, pretty much all the house lighting for an RV running on this system all at one time, pretty much 24-7. So all right, so what we have here is our double batterium system for our 500 amp hour bank one and our 500 amp hour bank two of our leaf cells into our two packs. So what we have here is our two packs in their current state. You will notice that there is very little voltage deviation between all of the individual cells in these packs. These are very well balanced. One of the characteristics of the Nissan leaf cells, especially if you get a good lot, is that they stay pretty well in balance. Uh, even without something to manage or monitor these cells, I've noticed that they'll kind of stay pretty well in balance and, until they really start to show their age. Uh, or unless you, you get one that's damaged or starting to build up some severe internal resistance, and, and then you'll kind of see them go out of balance. But that's really the only time that I've ever seen these packs come out of balance, uh, is when you've got a bad cell inside of a pack or some, somebody's got some really bad internal resistance going on aka is getting really old and needs to be swapped out uh, all of these were matched as they were built uh, there is actually two plus cars worth of cells in this room and they are all being managed and balanced off by the multiple batterium systems in the room just to kind of make sure everybody plays nice but these cells were all matched beforehand at a specific percentage rate by the company that i bought them from uh, especially since I was buying such a large lot and they knew it was all going into the same project. Uh, these cells, as far as I'm concerned, are, are some of the easiest cells to build packs with. Uh, they have some, some pretty heavy hitter technology that's, that's literally off the shelf from Batrium that you can buy to manage these packs and to keep them safely in balance. So it's one of the easiest and safest ways, in my opinion, to build a large format cell safely as a DIY person. Now, sure, you can buy an active balance board, you can buy other BMSs and things like that from AliExpress and, and whatnot. As far as the, the difference in cost, by the time you get done paying for the shipping and, and the multiple boards and all the interconnects you're going to need and all the extra hardware, all of that stuff is included with the Batrium system and it's like seven or 800 bucks with the shunt. Uh, that's everything you need to watch a pack like this and, and also to keep it well in balance. I mean, each one of these has 28 amps worth uh, of, of, of burn off, of bypass. So each one of these packs has at each end two amps worth of bypass current from these resistors at the end. So if we get out of balance, we can just start burning off four amps on each one of these seven packs. So for 28 amps worth of, of, of bypass current, um, you know, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. That's, that's more than enough bypass current to keep these in pretty perfect balance, as you can see here. So just wanted to take a few minutes and show you that Batrium system. And uh, there's tons of videos on how these are set up online. This, is, this isn't one of those kind of videos. This is just to show you what this setup looks like in practice in a large power room environment. This is just a quick note on our little upboard 15 watt setup. This is an up squared 
probably top spec. Uh, I believe this was the 8 gigs of RAM, 128 eMMC5. Uh, this has Wi Fi 5, uh, new uh, Bluetooth 4 or 5, uh, pretty much everything you need to get, get connected here. More than enough ins and outs. You could do a display port with this, you could do HDMI. Um, I believe it has a USB C out on it as well. And then you have just a standard monitor mount in here run into an outlet that's running off of the system and the system itself is kind of its own surge protector but you really do need a surge protector in line on a computer even with a system like this just for extra inrush current when you're turning the system on uh, you know spikes from any potential up voltage from this thing getting struck downstream uh, with lightning or, or any other kind of, of event electrical event that you can possibly think of, static discharge, things like that. It's always good to have a surge protector in there. Even a static discharge can create a million volts on contact. Uh, and I've seen it smoke electronics before my very eyes uh, on a nice dry day where there was a lot of static in the air. I was actually in a convention center in Miami selling small micro video cameras and a man came up and just pointed to a camera on the shelf and it literally smoked it right there. It was a very dry day inside that convention center that day. So just always remember, keep your safety equipment in place for all of your electronics and keep them nice and healthy for a long time to come. All right, so this is our main electrical breaker panel here. This is a 200 amp main panel. And we have that going all the way over there, as you can see, to the bottom of our Ames inverter. And that is what is lighting up our panel here. And then this panel goes both outside of the room and then also carries power to the rest of the room. So, we can use this panel to isolate all of our AC side circuits for the room, again, for safety, when we're working on the systems, when we need to rewire something, when we need to check something, we wanna make sure that all of those systems are shut off and that none of them are energized. And this is where we would do that. Uh, we've got some, obviously, some extra fittings and things up here that didn't end up getting used. Uh, and these breakers typically do need to be labeled, which is something that we are still going to be doing here. Uh, we've got a few more things we need to add to this panel, and then we're going to be doing a full label down here so that you know what each one of these breakers equates to, so you know what you're powering up and what you're shutting off. Obviously, in a room like this down here in sunny Florida, you need some kind of ventilation. So what we did here is we cut some vents to the outside of our Connex box with a downturn spout on the front so that no rain or water can get inside to the system and critter protection screens and whatnot and then we drew in on the bottom and we will be venting out on the top so that will keep the balance of air inside this room somewhere in the neighborhood of the outdoor temperature, maybe a couple of degrees hotter. And since most of the equipment inside the system came out of a car, you can imagine most of the equipment uh, that we're using here as far as battery cells is concerned can tolerate 130, 140 degrees, no problem. Obviously that's not optimal for them to operate in, but if we can keep this thing at 90 degrees, 95 degrees throughout most of the summer months down here in Florida, we're pretty happy with that. Uh, throw in a 4,000, 5,000 BTU tiny air conditioner into the room and, and you could keep it 70 degrees in here all day, every day, but you're sacrificing some of your power budget. Uh, so the more things you wish to run outside of this room, uh, you'll be eating up some of that budget for your available amp hours, watt hours. So we decided to use 12 volt solar panel single to a small intermediary circuit to run two small 12 volt fans at about 70% speed to give us about 250 CFM of just pass through air coming in and out of this room. We're gonna take the heat out on top and we'll vent that out and then we will take the cool air in from the bottom and we will bring that in and see how much we can do with just our passive cooling. This system is actually used uh, a different version of the same passive cooling once before uh, throughout a summer and it did quite well. I don't think the temperature in here ever got over about 97 degrees, which was I think the high for that particular year. Uh, we had no 100 degree days that year, so it does pretty well. 
pretty well for what we're doing. This isn't a room for human, human habitation. This is a room for equipment to hang out in, and we just need to meet the tolerances of the equipment, which at 110, 100, even 120, we're well within those tolerances. All right, so as we start stepping outside of our power room here, you can see that we've got a nice potential front office here where the floor has already been done, the walls have already been painted up. This is obviously not insulated as the back portion is. You've got your ABC extinguisher there for putting out any electrical mishaps that may come down the road. Again, safety, safety. So I just wanted to give you a quick pan around that so you can kind of take a look at that and then we're going to kind of drop back here. Sorry about the noise. As you can see, we're on a rather busy road here. But we're going to just kind of take a look at the system overall. These are our solar awnings that we've got here. Bring the brightness down just a little bit so you can see what's going on. These solar awnings are heavy duty. They're all steel. The three bracing poles pretty much just by the top weight of the awning keep them held into position. They can also be bolted into position so that they cannot be removed. And at the tips or the corners of each one of the arms is a mounting point so that you can mount a 6x6 post in the ground and affix the arms to it. And the position of those can be changed so that you can raise or lower each arm to the desired angle depending on where you're placing the unit. There are solar panels all along the top of the unit. There are six in each wing and six up top. So you have a total of 18 sun power panels on this unit, given off somewhere in the neighborhood of six kilowatts on a good day with everybody cranking just right. You've got your security doors on the front so that you can secure the room, lock this baby up nice and tight and protect all of the equipment inside from theft, vandalism, all of that. The window is also a security window and is lockable. And then all of your solar is on quick disconnect. So you can easily take every one of these panels, disconnect here and here with just a pinch, and you can take all of these panels out. They can be secured into the frame or they can just be left freestanding. The entire room is portable, so you can break this entire thing down, throw it on the back of a roll-off truck, and be on your way. We left a little bit of framing in here for a door, framing in here for a couple nice windows if you wanted to put it in there, maybe a vent up top. It all depends on your application. Uh, if you're not going to use the front office, obviously none of that is needed. There's also room for a small floor vent right here on the bottom. And that small floor vent could be connected up to even more basically active, active slash passive ventilation of the room versus say something like air conditioning you could throw in some some big fans just to make this thing breathe a little bit better while it's closed up uh, and you could actually plumb that out through the front door uh, pretty safely just a quick view of the back of the unit you can see the conduit from up top where all of our solar is coming in there's actually an upturn in the conduit up top so that no water can get inside of there. We're sealed until that upturn, and then we're actually filled with a little bit of insulator inside the tips of that pipe. And then we have our larger power connectors out here on the outside of the building. We've got a set of double GCFI right down here. And then we've got our 50 amp connector our 30 amp connector here, and then another outdoor box where we can break out for anything else we might need or permanently wire in whatever we might need. Hey, hey, shout out to nerds everywhere. Hope you like my setup. I wanted you to see real quick when we get this channel started where these videos are actually getting made and produced. This is my RV tiny home. We will also be doing a video on the RV Tiny Home battery setup. It's going to be a fully off-grid, solar-powered uh, tiny home motor home. And this is the office where we make all of our videos and produce all of our content. Uh, I also wanted to give a big shout-out to my boy Sammy. Uh, he's the one who did all the carpentry, all the trim, all the finish, all the floors that you see in the power room in the video. Also to my friends at Subterrain Incorporated. 
They were the ones that helped me actually finish out this build and provided some uh, financial support so that we could go ahead and bring this thing to finality. So uh, the fritzing diagram for this system will be available uh, if anybody wants to see that. Uh, I'm still actually writing that, but we'll get that uh, authored and get that up posted alongside the video here real soon. The room is for sale, so look for that on eBay with even more details and more pictures of the system and the full build process. I'm going to be doing more videos on outdoor power cabinets. Uh, the outdoor power cabinet, we actually did an off-grid system from an upcycled traffic cabinet. So that's going to be another video that we're going to be doing here real soon. And we'll also be doing a video on the fully off-grid tiny house battery and solar setup for, for this room that you're, there, that you're in right now. Um, it's going to be a really neat build. This is a really cool RV. Uh, as you can see, we've done some pretty unique modifications to this thing. So look forward to that. Look forward to more videos from this channel. And thanks for stopping by and watching our video today.